So this is the first time I've seen an Xbox XDX in person. It's got all these buttons up here. These are all programmable. It even has a display right here. So I'm looking forward to trying that out and seeing if that works. That would be amazing. Um, we have, of course, the disk drive slot there. We've got three inputs for USB. Oh, we got some loose parts inside. And then we've also got an extra debug network port right here. But it's definitely, that definitely is worrisome right there. This video is sponsored by Pippa Shell TV mounts. More on them in a minute. Uh, there is a ribbon. Oh, that ribbon cable is torn right there. That's gonna be a problem. One of the problems we're gonna have here is if this is, you know, if this ribbon cable, for example, is different than what I find on the regular Xbox One console, it's gonna be tough to find this ribbon cable because I can't just find a part from one of the, the regular retail consoles. So that could be a major problem. Okay, and here we go. I already see we're missing the hard drive or I think these came with SSDs in them. So we're missing the SSD. I think there's two of them though. So we might be all right. I'm assuming that if we don't have the SSDs that came with it, then I'm guessing it's not gonna, gonna work how the SDK console is supposed to work. But if we could get it to power on, at least show something on the screen, that would be amazing. So this ribbon cable is disconnected, that's fine. It's down in there. And then we have another ribbon cable down here. Let's see if we can get the bottom off and have a look at that. Okay, let's see if this will come up. Good so far, nothing's connected over there. Okay. So, okay, so this connector is for this front display. And it looks like I don't see anything wrong with it right away. So hopefully that'll work fine still. Okay, so we've got definitely a custom looking power supply, a random battery right here. Oh, that popped out of the front over here. Okay, and this is the connector for this custom board on the front. This custom board on the front has this little chip right here that I'm guessing probably runs that front screen. I love it when these boards have markings like this. So this one says 3.3 volts right there. I'm guessing that's probably input voltage for this board. So I love it when they have markings on boards like this just so then it makes it so much easier to test when you're running into problems on boards. So this is definitely a problem. We got somebody just taped this thing on here. I think it'll still connect fine. It's weird that they have tape on it when it should just connect in there. The locking tab is there. Hopefully there's no problems there. This piece is just totally custom to this board. So if anything's broken on it, it's gonna be hard to find replacement parts. Now this fan is pretty similar to the retail version, but it's definitely a little bit different. It wouldn't fit on the retail consoles. And the heat sink also looks pretty similar, but also wouldn't fit on the retail versions. Now on the power supply, it doesn't have the connector down in here. It's got these two connectors right here. So it uses these two to connect to the board instead of the two prongs that go up into the power supply like on the retail version. And then the disk drive. This looks like a standard disk drive. And we are missing a hard drive. It does have the regular connectors, so I think we can put a hard drive in here with no problems. But also there's supposed to be a separate, there's supposed to be two SSDs on this thing. Oh, here we go. We do have one SSD on here. So if you ever look at the motherboard of a retail version of Xbox One X, you'll see this slot for the M2 SSD drive, but it's just not populated. It doesn't have the connectors or all these little capacitors down here. So what's interesting to me is they probably just use this on the developer version and then just left all the circuitry there. I've seen a lot of people wonder if we could populate this connector and these components on the retail version. And I've thought about doing a video on that, but I haven't decided whether I should or not. So if you wanna see that, definitely leave that down in the comments and maybe we can do that in a future video. Now let's get this heat sink removed. See if it has a stock thermal paste on it or not. I'm guessing it does. It looks like this has been taken apart at some point before. Yeah, definitely factory thermal paste here. So we will remove that, put on the perfect amount, and then we'll start reassembling it and see if we can fix all those problems we found when we were taking it apart. I don't see any problems on the board as far as I can tell. It all looks really good. So hopefully we don't have to do any board repairs. 
So I'll do a little more inspecting off camera and if I find anything, I will let you know. It can be super hard to find good quality TV and monitor mounts, but that's where Pippa Shell comes in. They have a quality control lab to make sure that each of their products is gonna meet your expectations. That's working out great for them and you because right now they're the number one bestseller on Amazon. We're gonna be looking at two of their products today, one for smaller TVs and one for larger TVs. Their product kit comes with everything you need to mount this right on your wall. It's got a very detailed instruction manual as well as a template for drilling any holes you need to drill into your wall. It's got clearly marked hardware so you know what exactly goes where. Now this is the PIS F1. It is made for between 13 and 42 inch screens and it can hold up to 44 pounds. Now, even though that's the rated weight, they actually test that for up to four times that amount just to make sure it's gonna be able to hold the weight. Now, this thing tilts up to plus nine and minus 11 degrees just to make sure that you can always be comfortable no matter what you're doing with it, whether you're gaming or coding or just sitting down to watch TV. Now, if you have between a 50 and 90 inch TV, this is what you need. This is the PIXF2 and it can hold TVs up to 132 pounds. It can extend up to 29 inches and yet still flatten down to 3.78 inches. This TV mount is rated 4.9 out of 5 on Amazon with 88% five star reviews. So if you're looking for a TV mount, I think you're gonna love the build quality and the ease of installation of the Pippa Shell brand. I'll leave links right in the description so you can check them out. So on the bottom is the retail version of the Xbox One X and this is the developer version. So this is what I was talking about. It shows the SSD with this port all populated for it. And on the retail version, it just doesn't have any of those parts populated. So the other interesting thing is, if you notice the retail version, the motherboard on the bottom doesn't have any extra RAM chips. And on the developer version, it's got twice the amount of RAM because it has the RAM chips on the bottom and the RAM chips on the top. One more interesting thing I noticed is that the retail version has all of these pins right here that don't have anything on them. And on the developer version, it's got this connector right here. So some of these extra pads on the retail version are just from the developer version, but without the connectors populated. If you look right here where the power supply connector would be, it's not located there, but on the retail version, it does have this piece right here, which is where the power supply plugs right in. And now that it has the perfect amount of thermal paste applied, we can get to the reassembly and repairs. Now, one other thing I'm curious about with all this extra RAM, theoretically, this board is gonna use a lot more power than the retail version. So let's check the power supplies and see if we have a beefier power supply in this developer version. And on the top we have the retail version. We have an output of 12 volts and 20 amps. Down here on the bottom, the developer version, we have an output of 12 volts and 27.5 amps. So the developer version of the power supply puts out significantly more amperage. That's what I would expect given that there's so much more RAM and also more computing power in the developer version of the Xbox One X. Now we'll get this battery back in. And now we can get the board mounted back in. Now, normally a hard drive would go here, but I kind of think that maybe with that SSD on this board, this might actually not need another hard drive. I can put one in if I need to, but I hope just the SSD that's installed will be enough to actually get this thing to start up. The other really cool thing about this power supply is that it's got two fans right here just to help keep it cool. That's amazing. I kind of wish they would have done that on the retail version as well, but I guess they thought it didn't need it. But it is cool just to have the extra airflow through the power supply so it doesn't overheat. Okay, now we need to see if this piece will slide into that connector how it should. Come on. Okay, we're taking the tape off. Okay, I think that's what it should look like. So I think we're good there. Now I'm gonna put the tape back on to hopefully just keep that in place. Now I need to get this piece screwed onto the top plate. Okay, I think that's how that should be. Now we just have to get this piece put on. There we go. Okay, good so far. So now we have to get this in here and try and get all of those little connections on there correctly, which could be difficult, which is gonna be difficult. 
Okay, we got one. Can't really make it so you can see this one. Come on. Okay, this one I'm just gonna have to do off camera. I just can't get an angle down in there. Okay, I think maybe I got it. I can't tell for sure. Whew, okay. One more ribbon cable on the top. This one right here. Now these two screws, and then we can try and start it up and see if it'll turn on for us. Okay, HDMI and power. Whoa, <laughs> that's not good. So we had some smoking out of this uh, connector for this front screen. I think that means the connector probably wasn't seated all the way or was misaligned or something. <laughs> I don't even know, but I gotta take it apart and see what we burned up. <laughs> that smells so bad. Whew. Oh, uh, and that's no good. Look at this. I feel like, I'm not even sure what that is, if it's a chip or what, but it looks like we totally just toasted it. Ah, uh, that's a real bummer. That means most likely this screen is never going to work again. I think actually this was plugged in just fine how it should be. This chip is actually cracked right here. So I think probably what happened is I plugged it in, put power to it without noticing that that chip was cracked. And then because it's cracked, there's some sort of short circuit inside the chip and it just totally melted and blew this out. I think this console probably went through a drop or something, just judging by all the little broken pieces inside. So I'm guessing that it was probably dropped and most likely cracked that little chip. And that's what caused all of the magic smoke to be released. So unfortunately, this front screen is probably not ever gonna work again. I wish there was more parts I could buy for this so we could put a known good one in here, but I don't know of any parts I can buy. I'll definitely be checking to see if I can find any before I'm done with this video. But for now, I'm gonna plug everything else in and see if we can get it to at least show something up on the screen. Okay, and here we go again. HDMI, power. Hopefully no smoke comes out anywhere this time. Okay, I think we're good, maybe. Okay, the eject button makes noise and we do have a white light when we press that. Now let's see if we get anything on the screen. And we just have nothing on the screen. So there's two things that could be causing that. Number one, without having the hard drive installed, it can cause that. And number two, it could be a problem with the HDMI system on the Xbox. So the first thing I'm gonna do is install a hard drive and see if that'll get us a picture on the screen. And hard drive installed. And here we go, power. We've got power. Okay, the fan starts. The fan inside the power supply starts. Oh, here we go. Come on, there we go. So we at least have something on the screen. I gotta do a little troubleshooting here and see if we can get it to start up, but I have hope for this one. So let's first try and reset it. We're gonna try keeping games and apps. Oh, bummer, that didn't work. Okay, let's try a full reset and remove everything. Come on, restarting and didn't work. And let's try an offline system update. Okay, everything good so far. And install is complete. Now it has to verify the update and then apply the update. We're at 54%, so far so good. Currently we are stuck at 65%. I do hear the hard drive still making noise, so hopefully it's gonna keep going. And still stuck at 65. My hopes are fading. Oh, wait, it's restarting. Okay, maybe it's gonna work after all. So this is the part that might get a little difficult. I've heard that Microsoft will actually disable these and make them so they won't work online. I don't know if that makes it so they can't connect to the internet. I would think they would be able to, but let's give it a try and find out. Okay, it's all good. We are connected to the internet. And of course it's time to update. And it came up with this error, dev kit activation failed. I mean, I kind of assumed that I wouldn't actually be able to get into the dev kit somehow, so that's not really a surprise. I'm assuming you need some sort of hardware that you plug in or something to activate the dev kit. So there's unfortunately no way we can get into that, but let's try cancel and go to retail mode. Okay, and here we go. So I'm gonna get this all set up and then we'll test the disk drive and see if it'll play games. Okay, so I just logged in. 
Let's see if it's going to let us get to the dashboard. Okay. Good so far. Let's see if it'll read a game. It takes it in. I can hear it spinning. Okay. And there we go. So this Xbox One X dev kit is working to play games. Obviously, we broke it and we fixed it. I'll still be looking to see if I can find that bottom cover with that little screen on it, even though I'm not sure I'll be able to get it to work since we can't activate the dev kit portion of this console. But at least so far, it seems like we have a working Xbox One X. If you wanna see a similar video I made where I tried to fix a prototype Xbox One X, I'll put a link right up on your screen so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix it. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.